Hello, and welcome to the Parent Academy focused on synchronous and asynchronous learning in Arlington Public Schools. My name is Sarah Putnam, and I am the Director of Curriculum and Instruction. We'll start this academy by talking through the definition of both asynchronous and synchronous learning. Synchronous distance learning is interactive and is facilitated online in real time on Microsoft Teams. It is chunked into small segments to ensure that our students are not engaged in live instruction for extended periods of time. Asynchronous distance learning, however, occurs in many forms. It may be independent tasks or assignments, pre-recorded video lessons created by teachers, it also could include interactions with other students and the teacher, like a discussion board or a group task that doesn't occur in real time or is not live. And finally, asynchronous distance learning can occur on or off of a student's device. During asynchronous distance learning, teachers continue to support instruction, remediation, and extension activities. The learning in asynchronous distance learning is meant to be flexible and self-paced so that it fits within a student's schedule while still maintaining expectations for completion. Now we will go into some further detail around the support that you can give for, to your student from home. I'm joined with Elizabeth Harrington, Supervisor of World Languages, Megan Lynch, Assistant Principal at Nottingham, Nottingham Elementary School, and Lori Silver, Supervisor of English Language Arts. Throughout our conversation today, I will be posing some guiding questions and they will be giving some details around asynchronous and distance learning support um, for parents. Our first guiding question is, what might learning look like now that we are in the second marking period? At the elementary level, you will have seen your child's teacher establish a classroom community via Microsoft Teams. You'll also have seen your student grow and become quite adept at operating this platform. Within Microsoft Teams, the teacher will have established routines such as when it's appropriate or not appropriate to mute or unmute, how, using the hand raising feature, and how to best interact with their peers and their teacher. You'll also see that small group instruction has begun and the teacher is going to be working with small groups of students on targeted instruction that meets them where they're at and challenges them appropriately. You'll see students engaged in independent work under the direction of the teacher and asynchronous work is going to be considered the child's homework. What you might see in the secondary classroom is similar to what you might see in the elementary in terms of established routines. In a classroom setup, you always have an I do, we do, you do. So a class might start with a warm up to activate learning or prior knowledge, a review of the learning goals for the lesson, followed by a mini lesson, either presented by the teacher or via a quick video. A teacher lab demonstration might be something you see or a science investigation with some discourse. There's always time for practice and application, which is the we do. And then there's an I do, which is also practice and application. Reflection and closure on the lesson helps a student review what it is that they've learned for the day or for the unit. And then time for question and answers before the asynchronous work begins. The teacher during asynchronous time often stays on the line in order to answer any questions your child may have. So the following collection of slides are things you might see uh, your student engaged in throughout the day. And Ms. Harrington's gonna be talking us through what some of these activities look like, uh, including whiteboards, uh, video tutorials, exit tickets, reflection. So go ahead, Ms. Harrington. So you'll see a number of examples in the next few slides that we're going to share with you. And what I love about these is how interactive they are. And these are just some examples of what you might see as your child is studying any content area. So the first slide is an example of a social studies slide where a student can even click on Google Earth and search for different features. 
you'll see that within the interactive slide on the Rocky Mountains, there's actually a video that students will be able to play. And then of course, you also can see on this slide where students or a teacher has circled something. So you can really see the interactive abilities that teachers are using. In the second slide, you have a mathematics slide where it's, it's on number sense. And you can see that there are manipulatives that a child may manipulate on their screen and even draw numbers on a screen so that a teacher can really get a sense of how the child is working. In the next slide, you'll see some examples of a world language slide and another mathematics slide. You have sentence stems and visuals to help students remember what new vocabulary words are. We talked a little bit earlier about reflection and closure on a lesson. This next slide in mathematics is really a reflective slide in terms of what have you learned? Describe a new strategy. Tell about something you noticed today and how you helped, how it helped you solve a math problem. So it's really that reflective component that makes sure a student goes back to um, understand what it is that they've gained in terms of new knowledge. Some other examples you might see, our, our teachers are getting quite creative in uh, being able to call randomly on students. Here you have a spin wheel and the teacher spins the wheel and a student is randomly called on. Um, in the, the next slide, you also have sentence frames that help a student know um, what it is they're looking for. What I like about this slide and a lot of the interactive slides is you can even see on the sixth slide presented here that there are students in that slide visual, visually. So a teacher might say to your students, I want everyone to go to slide number five. And the teacher is able to see which students are present on that slide in order to account for engagement. In the next slide, you have an example of a collaborate board. This is another opportunity where students get to interact with a teacher and, and with their, their peers because they're adding something to the collaborate board and they see it happening in real time. And the last example that we have for you today is one in which students are working in small groups. So you might have students going out into a breakout room, working collaboratively with their peers, and yet there's still that accountability piece where they have to report back what it is that they are learning. And so the teacher and all of the students are able to see this happening in real time. Next, how might we be encouraging work that can be completed off of a device? We certainly want our students to also be engaged in opportunities of off-screen learning. So schools might be offering paper assignments for our youngest learners when necessary. And this is often dependent upon the content or the standards that are being taught at that time. And APS has provided materials like textbooks, workbooks, distance learning toolkit materials, whiteboards and choice boards to be used at home with students for their learning opportunities. How might families receive feedback about their child's progress during distance learning? Sure, at the elementary level, you can review your child's progress by logging into Canvas or looking at their Seesaw account and seeing how teachers have responded to some of their submitted work. You could also, at the secondary level, log into Parent View and check your child's grades or uh, assignments that have to be turned in or have yet to be turned in. And you can also look at their Canvas page. You also always have the option of contacting your child's teacher to ask them for more details or more information about how your child is doing. How might parents help their child successfully engage in learning from home? So there are a few ways that parents may certainly support their child at home. You, you always need to review the daily and class schedule and expectations for the week. Make sure you're supporting the productive struggle, which Elizabeth is going to talk more about in a minute. Troubleshoot technology issues as they come up, which we're also going to share information about. And flexibility, as we well know, is always key in our new learning situations. What is productive struggle? 
productive struggle is effort, effortful practice that goes beyond passive reading, listening, or watching, and that builds useful, lasting understanding and skill. Remember what it felt like the first time you tried to learn something new? How about the first time you tried to do a cartwheel, ride a bike, pick up a tennis racket, or anything new? Did you get it on the first try, or did it take you multiple times to get it just right? Learning something new generally takes grit, not giving up, knowing you might fail at first. And when you succeed, it can be the best feeling. Carol Dweck says, if parents want to give their children a gift, the best thing they can do is to teach their children to love challenges, be intrigued by mistakes, enjoy effort, and keep on learning. That way, their children don't have to be slaves of praise. They will have a lifelong way to build and repair their confidence. So as a parent, you might ask, what does this look like in real life? Because you may be watching your child really struggle with something. And the question is, when do you come and help? And when do you let a child build that grit and that perseverance? So something you might try with your child is saying, let's set a timer for three minutes. And I want you to try a few different strategies to try and do it just right. And it's okay if they don't get it right away. And sometimes productive struggle even means, let's get up and go for a quick walk around the block and then come back to it with a fresh set of eyes and oxygen in your brain. So over the course of distance learning, you may encounter some technology difficulties. And I want you to keep in mind uh, who to contact uh, and in what order to contact them if you encounter these troubles. So the first point of contact could be your child's teacher, but please keep in mind they might be teaching while you're having this, this issue. So the second person to contact would be your school's ITC, and they can help walk you through whatever it is uh, you're, you're dealing with. Another point of contact would be our technology helpline. Uh, which you can find details on that on the APS website. And you can always call the front office of your student's school as well. They may be able to help you troubleshoot the technology issue. The number one thing to keep in mind is please have patience. Technology issues do happen and it, it takes a village to solve them. So thank you for working with us to help solve the technology problems. Other ways for parents to be involved and to support at home. Establish clear routines with your students. We know that that has probably been in place since September, but sometimes now that we're into the second marking period, it might be worth revisiting what you've established to make sure that um, work is being completed and your student is being successful. Review daily or weekly the schedule that you receive from the teacher. You also have likely set up a quiet table or desk space for your child to work from. And then lastly, Encourage breaks in physical activity. As Elizabeth mentioned, that oxygen to the brain really will help students engage in their learning throughout the day, whether synchronously or asynchronously. Remember, flexibility is key. I heard someone coin the phrase that since this pandemic, it has felt like we are walking on moving quicksand. And sometimes it does feel that way. And that's why it's important to be flexible, give yourself and others grace, and remember to breathe. What might families do if they have concerns about the instruction their child is receiving? We're here to support you in an APS, and there are people that you may go to with questions and concerns that you have about your child. Please make sure that you contact your child's teacher first with questions and concerns that you have. You may certainly contact your child's counselor, and certainly you may contact your child's assistant principal and principal. So some more tips for success for you. When all else fails, encourage reading. When you have time, read with them. Book series are great because what happens is a child becomes really involved with a character and wants to even follow that character as they move through yet another book. Complete a choice board together. Most content areas have, have um, choice boards that have been put out so that you can do those with your child. And it involves lots of choice and lots of different activities. Ask how and why questions, because those require more than just a yes 
or a no answer. Remember that not everything has to be academic. I talked earlier about productive struggle and sometimes that can be challenging to watch and sometimes it can be challenging to interact with somebody who's struggling. And so maybe creating other routines too where you won't have those interactions of challenge, but instead play a board game or card game. Maybe there's even Tuesday night as board game night or cook and bake together. Cooking and baking is a great way to do applied mathematics or go for a nature or neighborhood walk together. Again, remember to increase those oxygen levels in the brain because that will help you have a fresh look at what it is you're doing. Lastly, we want to thank you. We look forward to continuing our partnership through this journey. Thank you for taking time today to watch the Parent Academy video focused on synchronous and asynchronous learning and all of the ways that we can support each other together. For more information about distance learning, please see the Arlington Public Schools webpage. There, you can access the Elementary Parent Guide to Distance Learning or the Secondary Parent Guide to Distance Learning.